Congrats. Yes. When you play for you, you're naming the people. And what you want, you're naming the people. Well, greeting the people. Yeah, I love it when you greet, Adrian. That's great. Greeting. <laughs> Other prayer. Prayer for the country. For country. Yeah. Safety. All right. Well, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the faithful shepherd who stands over us at all times, our good shepherd, Jesus Christ. Keep us ever in the fold of his flock, uh, feeding on the, the pure food of water and drink and the word and the sacrament. Uh, bless us always with the gifts that he gives to us within his fold and keep us ever within that fold and those for whom we pray especially for jake's family and friends and all of our family and friends who are who have been deceived by the by the culture and the popular things of this world that pull us away and deceive us away from the truth of your gospel and jesus uh, fill us with compassionate hearts that speak the truth in love uh, to all people uh, that they might be freed from their burden of guilt and sin <laughs> And live a new life in Christ. Grant Jake and his family a safe trip as they go to Boston for a Yankees game. Uh, grant them an enjoyable time and safety. Also for Adrian, we give you thanks for his greeting of us this morning. Continue to let the light of your son Jesus Christ shine with great joy and boldness in Adrian for, for many years to come. And dear Lord, guard over our country. Uh, keep us safe, free us from violence, and grant us uh, rulers that are just and peaceful. We give you thanks for the trip that we had to Kentucky and all the sites and the times we had along the way and for the growth in your son, Jesus Christ, and his word, which we enjoy. Uh, bless this hour and presentation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great. Uh, so those who went on the trip, come forward. We uh, have to go on memory. Well, for the long with us, just smoother um, adults, kids, right? How much is the kid? Yeah. Well, yeah. Kids, how much? Yeah. Is the kid? Yeah. Well, yeah. Kids, yeah. How much yeah. Is the kid? Yeah. 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 Uh, I like that. So, along with, I guess we'll start with the youth. Uh, we got Connor, Micah, Keegan, and his girlfriend Callie came along. Uh, and then we had Jack Beerman and uh, uh, Ava Gatsky and Avery Millions came along as well. Uh, had a wonderful time. So those are the people from our from our youth. And then we had other members of the congregation. We got Jake. Raise your hand if you went along as well. We got Rhonda and then uh, Cindy and Dave Buckles and then Jesse as well. Uh, you know, Robbie's came along. Um, um, uh, Bob and Ted came along and uh, Patty and Gary Barber. And Paul Mark Conrad. And then the rest of the bus is filled up with a group of, of, uh, of kids and, and then chaperones from Freeman, South Dakota, uh, from our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls. Their deaconess came along with a number of youth as well that our boys don't know. And where else? Wentworth. And then there were three girls from Wentworth. Yep. And uh, all of them had a fantastic time. So we put a, we have a presentation for you guys, and I'll I'll let you why don't you come over here and kind of stand out of the light, and you can click through past the dollars. I think you just the right arrow and bottom right at the right arrow and go from there. Okay. <laughs> I think you should go ahead. The record show. The first time hearing of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went on a fairly really long trip here with a lot of time on the bus. We started out in Sioux Falls and then uh, drove to the Concordia University in Wisconsin um, on Lake Michigan there uh, the first day. <laughs> 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 then um, the next day we uh, drove down. Chicago um, to Korea Theological Seminary, St. Louis. No, Corway. Corway. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's okay. They're practically named the same thing. They are. <laughs> yes. um, mm -hmm. Then from there, we went down to Potter's Ranch, Kentucky, and spent a couple of days there. Um, 
a lot of fun stuff like zip lining by tree tag and whatnot down there. And then went to the Art Encounter and Creation Museum while we were staying there. Um, then we came back, then we stayed at Seven Mary and St. Louis. I went to the Creation Museum too, at the while we were staying at the bottom of the Please, for the University of Wisconsin. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. oh, sorry, you want to move forward? Yeah. This is simulation. Do you guys want me to do the presentation? Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was your age, I would have just died before I got up. Uh, so our, our first day was at Concordia Mequon. Uh, that's where I went to school. I grew up in 45 minutes north of it. They put us up in uh, the dormitory, the oldest dormitory on campus. And it's where I stayed as a freshman with all the other football players. And it was the same hall as I was when I was a freshman. But they gave us paper bench. Like, they were paper towel bench. Couldn't even grip them, but that's what we slept on. And they were great, weren't they, Jesse? They were phenomenal. phenomenal. Did, you, did you get some for your own house now? It might. But the picture on the right here uh, is a picture of the bluff. So the Concordia Mackinac is right on Lake Michigan. And so these are the lights on the path that zigzags down at night when the, the lights of Milwaukee there to the south. And uh, so when we got there at about 1030 at night, everybody wanted to go down to the lakes. So we did that. And then they got up, these girls, at like before five in the morning to catch the sunrise. And Jesse, Jesse and Rhonda went down there to take these pictures. There's glorious pictures of the sunrise coming up over still with which she doesn't have it on. So that's Ava and and Ava and Ava Reed. This then is the guys running into the water. The water is about 33 degrees. <laughs> I think we have a video. Sound on. So there's you guys going in and out of the water. And coming back out very quickly. We were all too dark. Not here in so I'm working on that. You'll watch it for the next stream. We're up at 100% over here. Yeah, I think right. Right, so I'm confused. You got your camera? Yeah. So, the wife is coming in. You need to hire an attack. No, no, no sound. Anyways, we're screaming, especially me. You hear sounds of me screaming like a little girl. Uh, but we all went under the water and uh, it was refreshing. So, here we are. Uh, you'll notice how red all of our bodies are. <laughs> uh, uh, this was a just a cross that they had erected down there on, on the block. Uh, Concordia University of Mequon is one of our, oh, I forget how many Concordia system schools we have right now, but the main focus of the Concordia system school is uh, providing church okay, work that's a camera. And, uh, and other church workers for the church. Okay, so we did devotions every morning and every evening. Uh, straight out of our hymnals is the order that we use the order for daily prayer for the most part. So here's a picture of me when I'm doing opening devotion on the bluff that's Lake Michigan in the background. And we sang every time we did it. Too. Uh, so our bus driver got this is what we did in prayer on the bus. Uh, but she was a vocal performance major in college. This the, the students were so amazed when they came into the chapel of Christ Triumphant there at Concordia Mequon. It's a really big organ. Um, a neat thing if you take a tour of Concordia Mequon. Is that this is a stained glass figure of Jesus, but it used to be Mary. So Concordia Mequon was a Catholic <laughs> convent, and it was purchased by the Missouri Synod for a school. So they they changed the figure of uh, the stained glass to be Jesus' face. But it's the only blue that you'll see in Missouri. Uh, but the acoustics of that chapel of Christ crown there is phenomenal. Beautiful. Uh, the kids walked in and they just were again. That's the right word. Amazing. 
since there was a gap with I'm going to do those 10 years going to chapter the stations that across. Yeah, yeah, the stations. Yeah, had stations that across. When I was a student there, they still had um, oh, what's it called? The box behind the altar. So, oh, the, uh, there's a name for it. Sorry. Anyway, uh, for lunch, we went to Reed House, uh, which was right on the marina in Racine, and we had a fantastic time there, an amazing meal. That was actually pretty reasonable, catered for all of us. Um, so the kids, the boys ate it on up, that's for sure. And then they went for a walk on the, um, <laughs> on the lake front yeah, there. Micah, do you want to tell about what you have in your hand? Yeah, my um, really yeah. yeah. <laughs> not open. He, he's trying to the ketchup. And somebody <laughs> must have thrown the ketchup off of the balcony of the restaurant and landed in the rocks, and it's still unopened. Did we use it as a home? <laughs> it still tastes. It did. It just fine. Okay, the expiration date. That was it. You couldn't find it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we gave it to the twins first. <laughs> but it's just beautiful sights there at the marina. And, um, yeah, uh, and, and you're seeing it. So that uh, afternoon, then we drove down to Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, made it through Chicago after a delay. Got there pretty late at night, and I don't know, 9 30, 10 o'clock. We did compline in the back chapel of the Kramer Chapel. You guys want to talk about the Kramer Chapel? What do you think of that place? That was another awestruck moment, I think. The acoustics in that place were amazing. We had like 50 people that were singing, and it just, I just three. And then, yeah, one more. It all came out of chapel service. In summer, it's, you know, less people. Uh, but there were probably about 50 people that were there for service for chapel, and they all left saying that was amazing. There were like so few people there, but it was so loud. So, I mean, something in like the movies or something, they walk into and you're just like, wow. You guys want to talk about the bricks? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, next slide. There we go. There's the bricks. <clears throat> so the Concordia Seminary in Fort Wayne was originally a teacher's college or a preparatory school, and it was designed by a man named Daryl Saarinen, uh, Swedish or Finnish, I forget. Sure. <laughs> and Scandinavian architect. He also designed the St. Louis Arch, and he also designed the uh, Air Force uh, Air Force Academy Chapel, which looks very similar to the chapel at, at Fort Wayne. So it was designed in like I think a Swedish or a Finnish a Scandinavian village with the church, with the chapel at the center, and then other dwellings uh, spaced out around. But he had commissioned uh, specific bricks. So all the other buildings in the communal life of the seminary were going horizontally, uh, reflecting the second table of the law and how we interact with each other. And then in the chapel, they're flipped vertically uh, to symbolize the, the vertical gifts that come to us from above. And the faith that we give back in praise to our, our Heavenly Father. So everywhere you go, you're reminded of, of your place that God has put you in life as his dear child to the sacred community. So there's a, a group picture uh, with the pond and the chapel behind. That's everybody that was on the bus. Then uh, the next day, we traveled to Potter's Ranch. And you guys want to talk about Potter's Ranch? Okay, go ahead. So it was like a private area in Kentucky. It was a lot of acres, just a really big uh, ranch area. Uh, we had a group of us staying on the top of the hill. There's a group of us on the bottom of the hill. Uh, the worst part of the day was probably making the trek up there, but it was definitely worth it. Uh, we also did a lot of activities while we were there. Uh, there was zip lining, and then a couple of us did some kayaking on the river, too. There were some hikes. Uh, a couple of us went on the, what was it, the million dollar view hike. You know, which I don't know if there might be a picture here too of that, but it was a really good hike and took a while. And then in uh, addition to some of the activities too, there also was for meals, it was a private chef. So all of the meals and everything like that was just really good. And it was a great place, just a great area. It was really good times for all of us. I think there is a video, but you don't have a screen. What did they have their zip line? They yeah, it was a fantastic line. facility. We had bags, wonderful yes. food. We we did a porch morning <clears throat> evening prayer as well. And the cook complimented us for singing because he was a choir teacher, I think, the previous 
documentation. Yep, so here is a, a fellowship hall or the, the dining room area and the food that we had. The biggest problem with the trip was we had too much food. The food was too good. That was honestly the biggest problem. But that's one of the some of the dormitories for the Potter's Ranch. We do this trip again, we gotta stay at Potter's. Oh well, yeah, here's a video that Cindy took of me. When it is like a quarter mile long zip line, and I don't think I'm exaggerating. Screaming out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I didn't keep going. But if there was one girl on the trip from Madison, like the most quiet, most reserved girl, and she gets up on, she's at the edge, and her knees are just shaking like this, <laughs> and you hear her just screaming, and, and the guy wasn't going to push her. But she was brave enough to step off and she screamed and then she didn't breathe until, she, <laughs> until her feet touched the ground. Yeah. But she was so in, kind of, she was crying. She's crying. <laughs> yeah, when she got back up to the top, she just burst into tears. Yeah. It was just. Well, we're so proud of her. <laughs> it's a challenge. Yeah. So here's uh, some more pictures of us doing devotions outside the patio. Uh, Destiny, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> so you know my love for animals. Um, we stayed at the bottom of the hill in these dorms, and our bathhouse was a hundred feet or so behind us. So we had to go out if we wanted to go to the bathroom. We were outside one nice run. I think I saw that. No, it was a bird. <laughs> People lied to me. All of us girls were in one cabin, and these four girls. So our two Birkins girls and the two Sioux Falls girls headed off. They became the best of friends. Um, sleep was not something they did a lot of. Uh, so when you hear a door go in and out, at one point their screen was off their window. Girls, please leave the screen on your oh. window. We put the clothes. The air conditioner is always hot. <laughs> There's a lot of laughter, so I finally get up, only for the girls to be freaking out because they went to go to the bathroom and they saw that, <laughs> and then they saw a raccoon, and then their screen was off their window and they didn't know how. <laughs> so that was the only time I think I had to use assertive gestures and say, okay, leave your screen on your window, stay inside. If the back gets into our cabin, we will have a problem. <laughs> and this was a Snapchat I sent to Fester where, like, help. <laughs> Here's a second story window, so I have no clue why they are. And there's a picture of Carol the Raccoon inside the door. Uh, so this is a. Uh, Picture of it. So each morning, Jake and I got a chance to do a little run, and which was a lot of calories going up and down that hill. I think it was 15 or 16 degrees of incline, and the bus went up it somehow. Well, man, you had to run up. Track. Track. I yeah. we took the other paths in the. We did the million dollar view yeah. the one morning, and then we what was the other view? Um, it was the prayer portal, yeah. in the prayer area. Yeah, yeah, overlooking the Ohio River. Ohio. Um, Keegan, what did you get here? You got a game. I buy Gary Fancy Cribbage Boys. Yeah. At the uh, creation. So he's wow. teaching my guy to play cribbage. Is that it's like up. an art cribbage board? Yes. 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 Cool. That's, that's pretty top cool. Swings around. Swings around. Wow, that's pretty neat. It's pretty, really, really cool. pretty neat. Yeah. And uh, I guess this is me fixing the bus. <laughs> we may have. I like how good always this is really our bus driver. We have a good picture of her now. Really. No, just her, her name was Sunshine. She was the most fascinating gal. She was a high school student at Columbine when the shooting occurred. I was a senior that year when it happened. She was not at school that day, but all of I mean, she lost friends and uh, first and virtually many school shootings afterward. Uh, and a really a remarkable uh, story in her life. Uh, was kind of Christian, definitely went away from Christianity for a while, uh, and then and then came back as as well. Um, I don't know. I gotta catch up. With her. There are some other interesting things about her. Do uh, you remember what they were? She was in a cult. At oh yeah, school. that was it. Was that a cult? What was it called? Yeah, she was in some kind of cult that is, it was defunct, and they were on ABC News. Yeah. Um, yeah. Both her and her husband got out of that cult. And then got got married. They have a family now through that. So was he, yeah, different religions. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Bauer's sermon, she would have said on it. Yes. That one. Yes. Um, yep. There's our group at the top. And then we're on to the creation museum. So this is us going in with our bus group. Lots of buses going into it. There's 
There's a uh, Ron Robbie. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> yep. uh, the group on the other side, that's a group from. What do they do? Yeah, Redeemer in Sioux Falls. This was like a 3D experience where they shot water and air in your face during the movie. That's kind of different. Is it no? 40. I think it's 40. 40. Yeah, because so they have the. Really don't have any pictures of the creations. You guys want to talk about what we saw today's creation movie from there? There's there's a lot there. How about a high point of the creation? For me, it was probably like seeing the background and history that like relates to the Bible, like the evidence for it. Like we don't need the evidence, but there is a good amount there too. The creation was just kind of highlighted all of that throughout scripture. Yeah, kind of building up the conversation. I enjoyed a lot of like the exhibits had stuff that would like tie it to other religions and like other cultures that <laughs> mentioned Jesus or had very similar script, not the exact same stories, just with different things. They had this big long hallway you walk down it's basically the story from creation to the death of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the yeah. creation museum and the Ark Encounter have books that you can buy in their gift shop that have pictures of every exhibit and every sign that's on every exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, and we had got that tip going in so didn't spend any time taking pictures of them purchased the books in the gift shop um, and it's beautiful because it's just walks you through each museum and has all those signs. Which was helpful because there's so much there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to add to this too. Um, I just thought it gives you like more visual, uh, I guess, an idea of what, uh, like, scripture, what, what they're trying to explain in scripture. And it's just nice to, hey, see some visual images or just see some visuals, hey, comparing like scripture. And hey, it's just it's a cool experience because you're, you're there. And you're able to interact with all this, all this stuff, and and it's just a wonderful learning experience. Every night we kind of, kind of processed everything, and I remember Dave Gasky saying what was impactful for him was you're walking through the story of creation, you have beautiful depictions of the Garden of Eden, and then you walk into the next room, and it's the fall, and it goes to images of the death camps and uh, World War II. And then recent pictures of the homeless camps in the United States where um, people are you know, addicted to drugs and, and different things. And they're like recent pictures too. It's not like pictures from the 60s when society fell apart then, but but recent pictures. And Dave Gasky said that really, really kind of shocked him. But then you saw uh, creation being rebuilt through the cross. Uh, Callie, Keegan's girlfriend, she said the most memorable thing for her was going through story of creation and with the culmination in the cross at the end and she says i just stared at a, a picture of jesus on the cross you know, whipped and beaten and bloody and dead and it just struck me he died for me he died for me fix all of this this mess of sin and, restored. And, and jesse and i said well that's this trip work is it <laughs> uh, and on that trip i started doing confirmation work we were going through the cabin got a lot of a lot of time when you guys were in student in the back for a month. Pastor, yeah. can I add to that too? Um, the one the main takeaway I had at the very end was it was us uh, this play called The Truth About Abortion. And yeah. you hear popular arguments on our side versus their side. And this one I had never heard. Can I take time to read it quick? It's a woman's body, so it should be her choice. That's their argument. Our defense is the baby does develop inside of the mother whose body undergoes significant changes. But the baby is not part of the mother's body. A pregnant woman's body does not have four arms, four legs, and two heads. Abortion destroys the baby's body, not the mother's body. And that one just really hit home because I had not heard that argument before. But there was there were six different arguments on here. So that, that was my takeaway. Yeah, it kind of gave like a historical show of how the verbiage and vocabulary change on women's health over the course of the time. I appreciate that. All right, then the next day we went to the art encounter and that's it. It's a life scale replica, all made out of wood. How many men's wood ties are strong? 510 feet long. 510 feet long, I think it's maybe more than that. I think that's more than How wide was it? It's like two city blocks. It was great. 
So there's um, I have set my rainbow in the clouds as the Bible verse right hand side there as you think right. And there's our entire group. We had custom made shirts. Thanks to the girls, Ava and Avery got together and they designed our shirts for the group. And that's just our, our kids there from Mount Gallery. You guys want to talk about some of these pictures here? Yeah. The art, what do you guys like about the art? Um, there was a lot of cool things, like, obviously not things for sure, but they had like a lot of different exhibits, like about how they would have gone about like maintaining like kids by and like how they would have farmed and like, irrigated that, how they would have kept the animals and like cleaned up that them and the system they might have had for that. Um, Engineering stuff sounded interesting. I did, yeah. Hear, you know, like all like the plans that you can do, like the way like the light is reflected from the top and all the into the lower levels. On the right side, this is uh, the door into the arc, and it's kind of hard to see, but there's a cross in the middle of it shining mm -hmm. like there's some of the gals here yeah. in the middle. These are massive trees that somehow or another they put into the middle of the arc. Those are the main beams. Here's uh, well, Michael, what are you doing? Just odd. Uh, they... <laughs> this hand is not resting on the ship. I'm not anywhere close to the ship. Yeah. They had different depictions of the seven days, six, seven days of creation. So, uh, this is Jake with the people from Waterton? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, right? it was, yeah. Watertown. Yeah. 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 That was one yeah. guy on the right is a he's a he's a plow. He does like he does a service. plow ministry. Plow so yeah, there you go. Plow ministry for uh, prisoners. Um, At the ark, they also had like, like an outdoor zoo, all sorts of animals. The girls rode camels. Uh, Mike, do you want to talk about this? <laughs> this was a uh, Jesse. Yeah, we'll help with this one. This was a VR thing they did. Virtual reality. Yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of a lot to process, but it's basically a robot takes you back to time machine to watch the arc being built. This robot does not know how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like some practice. They all said it was really neat. I should have done it, but I have to go back next time. And uh, this is how great the <laughs> mustard <laughs> was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bill. So the the giant the giant arc there. Have they pop that in like the ocean and see if it will stay above water for forty days and forty nights? Or not? <laughs> I don't know. I don't it's think so. Either. But it's a good thing. If there's a flood in the area, we may need to test that. I just I just got me leaning forward there. Yeah. But actually, it would, they have right like, Yeah, they have a lot of technological uh, and like shipbuilding. They have shipbuilding. Uh, examples there, which I thought was fascinating. Um, yeah, but I think everybody in this picture is sleeping except Jen. Maybe Jane's still reading the book. Um, here we are coming to St. Louis. That's the uh, arch, of course. In the boats that we were doing that. I'm looking right here. And here we are at the Concordia Seminary. That's the library with the pond. I did go swimming in that a few times over my years. Because when you finish a class, you can swim in it. You got to take a shower. Oh, uh, <laughs> this is a oh, this was thing, yes. the one the cafeteria of the remodel get from um, the churchman in Sisseton. Forgetting the guy's name, I don't think we took a picture of it. Um, but it's, it's pretty neat. This is a chapel, the chapel of St. Timothy and St. Titus. We had a tour of the campus. That is the the bell tower, there's a clarion inside it as well, like the Campanile has a clarion as well. And that top bell tower was completed in the early 70s, late 60s, I forget exactly when, right around the time of seven I think it was completed before seven X. The stairway to the top's about this wide. Yeah, it was like Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. um, the stairwell was like this, you had to walk up sideways if you went up in, into the tower. And yeah, that's more pictures. The tour guy was like yeah. six, eight. Big, big guy, but he got up right Was it Tom Schlund? Was that? It was probably Tom Schlund. My old class meeting room. No, this was a seminary. Yeah. Oh, Kirk, this is a seminary. Yeah. So there's, uh, yeah, there's the bells on the left. All the way up. 
It's a former professor of mine that I ran into, Tim Celeste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, that's it. This is my dorm room, my first year in seminary. <laughs> yeah, nobody's lived in it since, and it looked kind of like a horror film as you're walking through the whole dorm. But my class was the largest class in Seminex, so they stuck us in there. Uh, I got it, got some furniture. We had a very conditioned room. Guess I am that old. <laughs> There's Luther on the left and Ron on the right. <laughs> Our devotions again are, are including him. Was it nice strong word? Is our last one? Yeah, our last song along the way was our closing in today. Nice one. <clears throat> so here's the fact six days, 37 participants. Favorite stop, they said, was the Ark Encounter. These are survey results. They'd like to spend more time at Potter's Ranch, Best Deals. Uh, nice catered ones. Cost was about that. That is. The end of the show. Any further questions? Well, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> we doing a Bible study today? Yeah. Or, uh, All has room talking with your lions, get baptized, confirmed, and have an hour. So that's fine. <laughs> well, it's clean enough. Very good. So, in our study, we have gone through invocation, best chef solution. We've had the, the psalm, the intro, it. Um, uh, we've, and we've talked through having uh, the, the prayers and the Old Testament reading. Then there's this uh, another part of a song called The Graduate. Um, gr gratus in the Latin means step. And this is when the pastor uh, pastor would read the gospel from a step or platform. Initially, the gradual was in the place of where our Alleluia is. And so after the epistle, um, which was the only initial reading, the an epistle and the gospel, pastor would step up to the ambo, which is um, it's a design that was replaced by the pulpit. But kind of like how we have a lectern in a pulpit, the pastor would step up to this and during that movement, um, the, the congregation would sing the graduate. And it typically would reflect the thoughts of the epistle lesson just, um, just read. There could be other music here, Bach's cantatas. I went here, if Thomas, if Thomas uh, Teagues were here, he'd tell you all about Bach and his, uh, and his music. Um, but this was another place for that. What page After, is that on? Um, I'm, I have this written on my oh, own. Oh, OK. I thought yours, this was in the Those are my notes. Yeah. <clears throat> thought this was in the service book. Well, I mean, uh, there's this place for the gradual in it. 156? 156 is the divine meaning. Yeah. I'm sure that'd be right after the. Uh, yeah. 156. Thank you. So, after that, after the gradual, uh, we have the epistle reading. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to the church today uh, with words of instruction, words of, um, of faith in Christ as well, uh, the words of, of the apostles. Um, after the epistle, uh, and the epistle also typically points to the gospel reading in the one-year lectionary. In the three-year lectionary that we used to do, the epistle would often be like you would take a month and go through an epistle. And it wasn't as directly connected to the gospel. But for one year, it's more about what's the gospel reading for the day. And both the Old Testament and epistle point to the gospel reading. So like today, you'll find that both um, the Old Testament is from Jeremiah 23, warning about false prophets. I didn't send these guys. Don't listen to them. They're making it up when they when when you are being unrepentant and they say everything's fine, right? That, that's the Old Testament. Um, the epistle is uh, the second readings from Acts twenty. Uh, beware of 
false prophets which are to come. And in the Gospels from Matthew 7, Jesus saying, beware of false prophets to come in um, as wolves, but in sheep's clothing. Watch out for them. So, so you see how all those themes are linked together and is based on what the Gospel reading is. Um, before the Gospel reading, we stand up for the Alleluia during most of the church year. Um, and also adding a verse in, in, the, in the Easter season. Um, so, Alleluia is a Hebrew term. Anyone know what it means? Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. You know more Hebrew than you thought. Amen. Alleluia. Um, and so, why do we sing Alleluia as we're preparing to receive uh, the gospel reading? Why do we praise the Lord? It's a God, yeah. And because of his gospel of sending Jesus to us, right? Here, here's the really good word for us today. Even when it has law teaching, like watch out for false prophets, even so it's all rooted in Christ incarnate among us to save us through our good. And so we rejoice and praise the Lord. Uh, we stand to hear the gospel for the same reason. The gospel is the word proclaimed through the evangelists. So the epistle are the writings of the apostles um, with an asterisk. Um, and then the, the, the gospels are, are writings of the evangelists. So Matthew, Matthew is there, Levi. Um, Mark was there, John Mark, not one of the 12, but still there as an eyewitness. Luke went around and took notes of, of, from all the eyewitnesses, put them together. So Luke wasn't there um, for, for this history, but he made an orderly account of it. And then John was there, St. John. Um, as we see his own firsthand accounts of like being in the in the inner courtyard room with uh, with with Peter for his denial. Um, in the three year, sorry, in the um, in the divine service setting three after the gospel reading, we have the creed. What are the main creeds that we say in the LCMS? Apostles, Nicene, and Athanasian. What do you know about the Athanasian one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It very much focus on grasping what can be known of the Trinity. One father, not three fathers, right? Um, how we can understand the Trinity and how we shouldn't. Neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. Right? So a lot of um, what Athanasius um, the church father was having to fight against those who said that that Jesus is the son of God, but not God himself. That God uh, anointed him as Messiah at his baptism. That's when Jesus became the Messiah. You know, these, these false teachings, which again, beware. Bad stuff that can lead you astray. So creed, the Latin credo, anyone, anyone want to take a guess at what the Latin credo means? Yeah. Believe, believe, yeah, I believe, yeah. So we have just heard the Old Testament, the epistle, the gospel, these readings from God, and we respond saying, I believe it. Thanks be to God. I believe that this is who God is, um, uh, who he has made me, what, he's, what he has given me to do. Right. And so we publicly accept the truths that we just heard in the readings. And we also, um, in this, we're recalling and confessing a brief summary of the whole Christian faith. <clears throat> so on any given Sunday, we're getting kind of a slice of it. So today, what we're focusing on in the readings and in the hymns is beware of false teaching. But Jesus has your back. Right? That's that, that, that's our summary for today. In the creed, we confess the whole thing. Right? So we, 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 have, we remember and confess the whole context of the Christian faith. God, the creator, who still sustains all things. Uh, Jesus, who, who is God and came down from heaven, came incarnate to save us from our sin. And he not only died, but rose again and then ascended to heaven. He's ruling over all things, and he's going to come again soon. And the Holy Spirit, um, who, who guides the church today through word and sacrament. All right, so we confess that every Sunday. This is our God. Yes, dear. So sometimes, actually, you say that he's at the sermon? Yes, so in divine service setting mm -hmm. one, it's after the sermon. Wow. Um, I don't know the official reason. It, it would have the same function, though, because we just received God's word. Yeah, and so we're saying, oh, man, I believe. Yes. Yeah, it's just more of a, like, just continuing with the word. 
I don't do the, re the free reading through the sermon. Right. And it's still a part of the service of the word. Yeah, Tim. Well, and, and in the big picture too, right? This is this is the action of God's word is to create this. Sure. So this is why the creed is the response to the word. It's not just us initiating this what we believe the word. It's that it's again that God's action creates the response. You see where Aaron gets good theology. <laughs> <laughs> Why are some churches so resistant to having their creed? Because they're words written by men, and apparently no Christian can confess the Christian faith. It's kind of the, the assumption there. But it's it's a it's a misunderstanding of um the 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 word of the spirit as opposed to the letter of the law. Um and also because they, they mentioned baptism, forgiveness of sins. The ones who reject the creeds also reject baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I mean, they could write their own creed, you know, wouldn't be as correct. But I mean, there are things that they could put in it that would be correct. Right. But but then they would be doing the same thing that Rome did wrong in their minds. Ironically saying you don't believe in creeds. Right. Yeah. What I believe about that, what I believe about the Christian faith is that I don't believe certain things about the Christian faith. Like that, it's a statement of faith. Yeah. So the Apostles' Creed arose as uh, primarily uh, training catechumens, um, adult converts especially, uh, in preparation for baptism and confirmation, like we'll be having here this morning. And and so it has a lot of elements, um, especially of, of Jesus in his humanity of, of, of saving us, which are present in the Nicene Creed, but it's a bit lengthier in the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed was written, um, it came together anyway, uh, largely um, in response to some of the Trinitarian heresies. So again, you have Athanasius and others saying, Jesus is just the son of God, he's not actually God himself. And so um, and so the, the church put these true statements together in part to show, yes, in fact, Jesus is of the same substance as the Father. Homo Uzias was our trump card, saying, yes, Jesus is made of the same stuff as God. He is God himself, and yet he's a distinct person. So a little bit different of, of an approach than the Athanasian Creed, which deals with some of how to understand it and how not to understand it. What can we say? What can't we say? The Nicene, the Nicene Creed is simply, here's the truth confessed, focusing especially on Christ's divinity. Okay. Um, the, the creed should have Catholic, the holy Catholic and apostolic church in it. Um, probably one of the, one of the less good teaching things that we've done, um, in the last, I don't know, hundred years, I'm not sure when, when it changed exactly. Uh, no, it, it was in, it was in Luther's time even, um, to say one holy Christian and apostolic church because Catholic means, it means universal. But during the Reformation, it, it meant Roman, especially the Roman Catholic Church. Now, Luther didn't make this change himself. This was kind of the common way of doing it in German at the time. And then he just kept it that way of saying one holy Christian and apostolic church. So Luther didn't make the change, but he kept it that way. And we've been doing it ever since. The, well, best, the, the, the best we could do would be, would be to keep Catholic but teach it. Um, but that's had being too Catholic has had its own um, it has, has been its own offense in the LCMS within the last well probably about, about, about fifty years ago. So the LCMS maybe has held it, but like the ELCA churches use Catholic, they still do sure. in their creed. Okay. So it's not it hasn't been universal in terms of faith. Yeah. Okay. Because I grew up saying in our American Lutheran church Catholic. Yeah. yeah, and actually, I, I think it's because of their history that they, um, the, the Scandinavians, but those up there, that they didn't speak German, and so their creed still had Catholic in it by the time that the Reformation reached them. That makes sense. Then. I did. I did some reading on this. <laughs> <laughs> it was a couple weeks ago, but I did some reading. Yeah. Other questions, comments so far? 
How do we choose which creed to say on a given Sunday? Random. <laughs> Depends who you ask. Generally, we just alternate. But if it's a high feast day, we'll, we'll say the Nicene Creed. Um, more of the formal language, especially focusing on Christ's divinity. But otherwise, we tend to rotate. Isn't that right, Jesse? Isn't that how we do it? Okay. I only plan like the readings. So Jesse takes care of all that stuff. Is it Athanasian's one city or a couple of things? Once the Athanasian, uh, generally just generally just once a year on Trinity Sunday. Oh, in part because of its distinctive us. approach to the Trinity. They do it on other Sundays. Once a quarter, you should say. There are all sorts of rules that we can make up and do it just for the sake of teaching. Like it's it's not that we would just you know roll the dice to see when it's going to happen. We do it for the sake of teaching. So, for instance, it could be fitting to do on this Sunday of the church year, watch out for false teaching, especially about the Trinity. Here's the true teaching. And we do get a nice thing to read so That also makes sense. I think we should have a Mount Calvary memory challenge. We can memorize the last half an evening. I'm guessing more than the asking. Oh, yeah. So I was <laughs> promised that the whole opening section would take like 20 minutes and we'd have a lot of time for this discussion here. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I knew better. <laughs> it's good. Okay, uh, we will pick up with hymnody next time. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and that we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Thank you. Yankees fan too. So you are? Cool. cool. My so my dad uh Yankees fan. Oh. And, Oh, Yeah, next trip. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, I've been to Canada a couple, couple of times. I was really younger. I wanted to sing it twice. I flew to Lindsay Ball. Canada, we'd sing for like higher, like church, churches, and like. Probably, yeah, yeah. My mom would. Okay. Yeah. I visited Canada when I was right. in the Midwest. Yeah. Um, we'll start start the west side of the Midwest. I would be You could see me doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, it wasn't in a super highly populated area. So. Yeah, exactly. I went on a date with something on the Really? Oh, yeah. It's actually. 